You know, in the summertime, there's nothing I like more than just going camping, being in the complete wilderness, completely alone, and camping with my trusty tent right here. You know what I like to do when we're camping? I also like to make s'mores. The problem with this is that in Colorado, we have a lot of forest fires. And so because of those four of those forest fires I got to come up with a new way to be able to roast marshmallows and I think I've got a great idea using just the power of the sun. I'm Steve Spangler and I'm all about making science fun. For the last 20 years I've been teaching ways to turn ordinary science experiments into unforgettable learning experiences. I have an amazing team who will do whatever it takes to affect the way people think about science and to do that I live by one motto make it big do it right Give it class. Well, before we can harness the power of the sun to be able to cook our s'mores, we need to learn something about the science of this solar radiation that's coming to the Earth. See the sun up there? It's this giant, enormous ball of gas that, that goes through this fusion reaction where there's four hydrogen atoms that get fused together to make one helium atom, and this that's not really important. What's important is all this radiation is coming down and the Earth's atmosphere, just the air and the ozone layer block of 97 to 95% of this radiation that comes through. But the stuff that does get through can still be dangerous and that's why you need something like this UV checker to tell you whether or not you need to have sunscreen and how much you need to have. So you just push the little button here on this solar index meter. It reads the amount of UVA, which are the longest waves, all the way to UVC, which are the shortest waves, to be able to determine how much sunscreen you need. Bottom line, you got to have sun protection. So let's just say you don't have one of these fancy little UV detectors. Is there another way to be able to see the radiation that's coming through the sky? Come to find out there is. There are these fancy little beads called UV color changing beads. You see, these beads start perfectly white when they're not in ultraviolet light, but as soon as they're exposed to ultraviolet light, you can see what happens here. Watch. See, the white goes to this beautiful color. And there's actually a pigment in each one of these that uh, the ultraviolet light causes the, uh, the bond inside to be able to dense and twist, and you get these beautiful colors like this. You can see, just like glass, this plastic here on the outside of this pail allows the ultraviolet light to be able to come through enough to be able to make them change color. But if you dig down inside where we haven't seen any at all, take a look at this. You can see they actually are white on the top until the moment they reach the ultraviolet light. Now the really cool thing about these color changing beads is that when they're out of the sun's light and they have no UV radiation, the little uh, pigment bonds twist back to their original shape and they go back to their colorless state, which is very, very cool. Watch this. Well, these UV color changing beads are really fun to play with. They actually are a very, very cool tool to be able to use for a science fair project to be able to test the effectiveness of sunscreen. So here's how it works. You take a bag and you put the beads in the bag like this. Now, they're gonna change color immediately because this plastic here isn't blocking any of the sun's radiation. Now you take your sunscreen and you put your sunscreen on the bag like this and you just rub it all around the bag and you kind of smooth it in. It's not going to absorb, but you just try to cover it and then you can see how the intensity changes with the beads. And so this why this makes it such a cool science fair project is you're really comparing the effectiveness of these sunscreens using a control and uh, some very visual ways to be able to see how they change color. Watch this. This bag here has no sunscreen on it whatsoever. So it's our control bag. It's just the ultraviolet light coming through. You can see we get these beautiful colors as we had before. The second bag here had SPF 30 on there. So now we have some blocking, but take a look at this. It's not nearly as intense as it used to be. While the blues are still coming through and some purples, those yellows are almost completely white, which just goes to show you that there's a different amount of energy needed to change all the beads a different color. Move over to SPF 50. That's very, very cool because now we really see some white beads in here. Blues are still coming through, but that's cool. And as soon as you move to 70, this is the coolest part because you really see how faint and how well that SPF 70 does to be able to block the harmful rays of the sun. At the very end, you turn them all back over again. So now there's no sunscreen showing and they should all look like the control that you started with at the very beginning. That's cool. Well, now that we know the science behind the sun and kind of what we need to do to cook our s'more, we got to find a device to be able to do that. For that, we got to head back to the kitchen.
the microwave oven. What an amazing invention. Just a couple seconds, your dinner is ready. Remember when we got our first one in the 1970s? Every time Dad cooked a little burrito, I'd forget my name and make animal sounds. But that's not important. What is important is this. It uses microwave energy. Now, this is a wavelength of energy that could either be as big as a meter, maybe as small as a millimeter, that have different energies and different fre frequencies between 300 mzs and mzs. It's megahertz. I told you to do it phonetically, Higginsworth. Sorry, Steve. Stand by. Between 300 megahertz and 300 gigahertz. Why? Honestly, who cares? You know, even though the microwave is cool, it's not harnessing the power of the sun. And to do that, it's time to head over for arts and crafts, science style. Well, in order to make our solar cooker, you're going to need a recycled pizza box, preferably your own. Just pick off, you know, the old remnants there. It'll be perfectly fine. Close it up. We're going to make a window inside here as well. And to do that, I'm going to take a ruler, measure a two inch border all the way around so I can cut out the perfect window. You're going to leave the back so that you don't cut it. We're going to cut these three sides. And bam, done. This is our flap. Perfect. We need some aluminum foil. We're covering the bottom here so it reflects the sun. We're also going to put it on the inside of the flap as well. We're going to glue both of these in place so we really have a way to be able to trap the sun's energy inside our cooker. So now it's a matter of using a little glue stick to just glue the aluminum foil to the box. Next thing you're going to need is a piece of plastic. These are just pieces of plastic bag that we opened up and taped together. This is going to go over the opening like this. And now you're going to take packing tape and you're going to seal the edges. We want to trap as much of that solar energy in the box as possible. Just as we saw with the UV beads, the solar energy can go through the plastic with no problem at all. We just want to be able to trap that energy inside the box and not allow that heat to come back out. Let's see if it worked. It's a perfect window. And black absorbs heat, so it only makes sense to take a black square of paper and put it right here on the very bottom to be able to concentrate the heat here in the very, very center. So all the reflected light goes right here to the center, and this will be our cooking surface. Glue it down, and you're ready to go. But there is one more problem, and that is this lid won't stay open. But I got a solution for that. Higginsworth! In a little bit more. Perfect. Fixed. So let's say you don't have a Higginsworth. That's where the skewer comes in. Watch. You put the tape in place like this, and now you lift it up, and it rests right there. Voila. Let's review. The object you want to cook goes inside. Now, the reflective part gets folded down here. The handy dandy adjustable reflector gets opened up, positioned perfectly to catch all of the sun's rays. This gets held right in place and you got yourself a solar cooker. So now let's head back out to our campgrounds and see if it works. In the wilds of pristine, beautiful Colorado, nobody around. It takes me hours to get there. Don't even see any wildlife. It's just me, my cooker, and my tent. And my iPhone. And a computer and an iPad. That's it. That's all I need. And a cooler, a propane tank. And that's pretty much all I need. And some Taco Bell, just in case I get hungry. That's all I need. Oh, Higginsworth, my ice melted. Can you get me some more ice? Hey, no, on me, please. Light on me. Thank you. Thanks. Can you hurry? I'm really hot. Ding! Mm-mm, it's done. And it only took three and a half hours. And lucky for me, I was wearing plenty of sunscreen.
need for this anymore. Perfect. Perfect. Two more. 